Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits cry. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song to Hi, my name is John Rogers. I'm a member of Early Bird Rotary. We meet on Thursday mornings at Allen Al. With me today are Judith Slani of the Sheboygan Rotary Club and Jerry Plain, also a member of Early Bird Rotary. What we're here to do today is tell you more about a program called Making Spirits Bright, which is unique to Sheboygan and Sheboygan County, and also to help you understand what Rotary is about locally, nationally, and worldwide. So I'm going to ask Judith and Jerry a series of questions that will hopefully help you understand what we're all about and specifically what Making Spirits Bright is going to be all about. I'm going to start with Judith. Uh, Judith, help our viewers understand what Rotary International is all about, and then when you uh, continue your answer, what does that mean to a local Sheboygan, Sheboygan County perspective? Thank you for asking. Rotary International is the largest service organization in the world, has 1.3 million members and over 33,000 clubs around the world. As I said, it is a service organization and it focuses in five specific areas. One that many people may be aware of is Polio Plus, our health area. And Polio Plus has been a project we've been working on for many years in order to annihilate polio from the world. Okay. There are four countries left where polio still has a few cases uh, throughout the year and that is Pakistan, Afghanistan, India, and Nigeria. Okay. The other avenues of service are water, because we know that clean water and sanitation helps in health also. Literacy, helping children in particular to uh, be better readers, mm -hmm. to know more about their world. Um, health, as I said, with polio. And the, the most recent addition is New Generations, which is focused on young people, on students. Uh, so there are organizations such as Interact, which is a, a small rotary club in a high school, Rotaract is a community or university rotary mm -hmm. club. Okay. And uh, then we have our community clubs, which are clubs, as you said, you belong to the Early Birds and I belong to the Sheboygan Rotary Club. We also have two other clubs in the community, which are, one is located in Plymouth, and then there is Rotary West. And uh, they meet on Tuesdays, Plymouth meets on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. and my club meets on Mondays. Okay. You talked about the five global missions. How does mm -hmm. that translate into what happens here? In other words, what do the local clubs contribute to the community? Okay. In, I can talk a little of our club. I'm sure that Jerry can tell a little about, about what your club does okay. and maybe a little about the other ones. But we provide, we do fundraisers that provide funds to help uh, specific organizations. A couple years ago, we helped buy a new stove for Salvation Army. Hmm. This year, we gave a contribution to Salvation Army for their campaign, their capital campaign. Uh, just, uh, we decided to give money to Meals on Wheels. They're building a new building. And our club also has a service that we provide to the community. Uh, every Wednesday, we have four Rotarians from the Sheboygan Rotary Club that deliver Meals on Wheels. Hmm. Okay. in pairs. So we do two routes every Wednesday. We're also helping with the Taste of Sheboygan. We're volunteering for that and we're open to help volunteer. Uh, we just did something for the EAA out at the Sheboygan Airport. Okay. So we, it's manpower. It's, uh, we help raise money for specific projects here in Sheboygan and internationally. Okay, Jerry, uh, talk about some of the things that Early Bird Rotary does. I'd be happy to. Um, the motto of Rotary is service above self. Mm -hmm. So as Judy has already indicated, we are always looking for service projects to uh, get our members involved, to give back to the community, if you will. The most recent project that we had was adopting the Rotary intersection on 8th and Indiana in mm -hmm. Sheboygan. Mm -hmm. We cleaned up that area very nicely, put in a lot of lovely plants and mulch, and continue to maintain it, uh, watering it through this very drought mm -hmm. uh, summer that we've had. 
mm -hmm. takes a lot of volunteers, but we have a schedule on a weekly basis, and so somebody goes there two or three times a week in order to do that. Okay. Um, we've been very involved in Habitat for Humanity over the years, mm -hmm. so as those projects come up on an annual basis, we always provide volunteers for that as well. Okay. We do have a foundation, so we do receive requests um, on a somewhat regular basis, and as our funds allow, as Judy said in her club, we too provide uh, dollars toward other nonprofits mm -hmm. who are in need. Okay, okay. Right, and I, I, I think one of the things that interested me early on about Rotary was the amount of money that is contributed every year to uh, new generations in terms of scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we contributed to two students this year. I, I, I believe your Our club, club contributed also. Yes, we have okay. a scholarship every year for a high school student that's going to the university. And as Jerry was saying, we, we also have contribute dollars and uh, volunteers to rebuilding together right. every spring okay. and April. Okay. We help it's, them. It's always exciting when we have our club meetings to learn about some of the different things, some of the different ways that our members are contributing to the community. Mm. Um, that's a good overview, I think, of what Rotary is all about. Help me understand a little bit about the Making Spirits Bright program because this is a unique program where all four of the, of the clubs in Sheboygan County are contributing brain power, manpower, all kinds of different things. So where did the idea start with Making Spirits Bright? I think where it started, Judy and I happened to attend the same Rotary Conference and one of our sister clubs was there doing a breakout session telling all of the attendees about their show, which was very much like this in Washington okay. County. Okay. They provided a DVD that really got us excited um, because we got to see their lights in action on this DVD. But I think more importantly was the reason they were doing it, which we are certainly happy to talk about. Okay. Um, and that would be uh, the admission to these light shows is would be items for the area food pantries. Okay. So, so is the light show an open air type of thing or does it occur within a building? Help me uh, understand the magnitude of what a Making Spirits Bright program could entail. It is an outdoor program basically. We are going to be holding it at Evergreen Park between November 15th and December 16th. Okay. Um, it will be open approximately four hours um, on about 24 evenings during that time period. Okay. It is a drive through. Obviously, it needs to be dark, so sure. between 5 and, and 9 p.m. Okay. Um, so is this, is this going to be like a neighborhood light show, a neighborhood static display show? My mind is, is trying to capture what this might look like. I don't think we want to give away the whole show, oh, um, but it right. is certainly going to be something that we hope leaves a, a huge impact to the people who attend because the object is to make this ev an annual event. Okay. So there will be movement in some of these lights displays in that it isn't just a solid uh, display that people come in and it's, it's not there's there's no uh, movement to it. Okay. We are purchasing what we call controllers that can cause these lights to blink or to flash. Um, just one example, we are going to have bells across the bridge in the center of the park. Okay. So they will be on at intervals. There are 15 of these bells and wow. so there will be that effect versus just 15 bells all shining at one okay. specific time. All right. Um, but as I said, we don't want to give away everything that's going to be in there, but we are in the process now of making all these displays or finishing okay. them. And we start with a steel grid um, on which rope lighting is strung to outline whatever the display is okay. to be depicting. Will, is, is this going to be viewed within a car, on foot? by skis, anyway, anywhere? It is primarily a drive-through. Okay. Um, that is the goal. Um, the city is cooperating very nicely with us, assures us that if we have snow, that it will be plowed. Good. Um, so okay. people can enter 
off of Highway 42 and go the full drive gamut through the park. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything similar to this that you know of in Sheboygan County that another service club might have put together at one time or another? And you mentioned Washington County. Is that presumably the closest light show like this? If in fact it is a light show? There is a smaller version at the Sharon Richardson Hospice Center. Okay. That has, uh, I, I'm sorry to say I've never seen it, but I okay. understand that it's also very nice. Okay. But not to the extent or the expanse that it is. Okay. In addition, well, there's also an indoor event, and that will be taking place across the street from Evergreen Park at the J.C. Quarry Building. It will be an opportunity for families to come. Okay. They will park there. They, then they will get out of the car, come inside. Santa will be there. Uh, they can take family pictures. They can have snacks, hot chocolate, cookies, oh. things like that. Okay. So they can spend some time there. We're hoping to get organizations, small choral groups, uh, for high school choral groups, maybe some church choral groups to sing during part of it while you're there. Okay. So it's an opportunity for two aspects, to do the drive-through and to come and see Santa and hear some Christmas music. All right, that sounds good. So obviously the four Rotary Clubs are involved. Mm -hmm. Who else has been involved? When, and, and when you talk about Rotary Clubs, has there been a lot of uh, talk? Has there been a lot of actual building things? Uh, what's been happening? Well, we did begin building uh, earlier this summer, mm -hmm. and we do have the bells that I spoke of are all completed. Okay. Um, we have some other little Christmas trees, and again, I won't share what they are made of, but okay. those are completed. We're now working on a plethora of stars that are going to be hung over a canopy of trees that are in the park. This, this park is such a wonderful venue for this. Mm -hmm. It's just a natural, and sure. the opportunities are endless. Okay. We know that we cannot fill the park this first year, but okay. our attempt is to be having a focus in a certain part of it that people are going to go home and say, wow, I have to tell my neighbor about this, or I have to tell um, all of my relatives about this so okay. that they go, and of course to encourage them to come back again next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. For people to experience the whole Making Spirits Bright, how much time should they allocate? 20 minutes, 40 minutes, hour and a half? Oh, that's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, I would say probably 20 minutes is a good good okay. estimation mm -hmm. okay. um, because I said right. we we aren't going to light up the entire route this year okay so they will reach a point where there is no longer something to see perhaps and then that mm -hmm. that would speed up their exit but we certainly want them to be able to take enough time you know that they can stop and watch motion at a certain okay. spot if there is motion in that particular okay. display okay. however the flip side of that of course is we can't allow them to get out of their vehicles and take pictures because that could slow up people who are behind them, which, okay. which isn't a good thing. If, if I could quote um, some statistics from our sister clubs, um, both in Washington County and also La Crosse in Marshfield, who also have light shows like this. Okay. Um, they have experienced over the years anywhere from 200 to as many as 900 cars in one evening. Wow. So... As you can see, you would want to keep that flow moving as much as possible, but mm -hmm, still not mm -hmm. hurrying people so that they feel that you know they didn't have enough time to take okay. it all in. I uh, I was in La Crosse a number of years ago, and I believe I saw sort of, sort of the uh, the fringe of the light show and had to ask a few questions as to what it was. But I was very impressed with it, and I know in some of the things that you have talked about at our Rotary Club meetings in some of the pictures that you've shown, it's, it's clearly something that I think people will want to, to know more about and participate in. And actually, I have kind of a distant relative who works for an electrical outfit in La Crosse, mm -hmm. and he just gushes about the success in La Crosse and, and what that has done to the community. So, okay, we, the lights are up, somebody comes to, to tour it, what do they bring? Do they bring canned food? Do they bring money? Do they bring all of the above? 
we'll probably be making uh, some announcements in the newspaper and things. Specifically, we'll be asking the food bank here in Sheboygan as to specific needs that are in our community, because each community is unique. Sometimes we forget paper products are also something that people need. Okay. And additional to women's products, uh, personal okay. care products. But we will be asking the food pantries and the food bank in particular is where we will be delivering the food to, and then they will distribute to the food banks as they indicate their need. Okay. But they will be indicating to us what specific is needed here in Sheboygan County because it is unique. Okay. Okay. That's very good. And that, that helps me understand a little bit better who is going to benefit from all of the, the mm -hmm. items that get gathered. Mm -hmm. um, what is the immediate need of making spirits bright? As Jerry indicated a couple times in her comments, that we can't light up the whole park this year. Okay. And we initially had hoped to, to have that as our plan, but we didn't raise sufficient funds. Okay. So what we're looking for is we have uh, a little, a little, just a little bit that we need yet. We're so close to our fundraising goal. Okay. You may have seen things in the newspaper that I we have. were asking for people in the community. Our goal is another $25,000 in okay. order to be able to fill the park with lights as far as our design is this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there a deadline for raising that $25,000? Yes, there absolutely is, and it's quite soon. Okay. Uh, we need to make that decision by the end of this month, um, and that's okay. perhaps for a couple of reasons. We've somewhat put construction on hold because if for some reason we did not raise this money, um, we would not be spending that money perhaps right away either until we are sure that our sponsors are okay with that, those that have come forward to this point. Um, if we wait any longer, for dollars to come in, we are jeopardizing our ability to get all of the displays completed okay. because okay. we do intend as early as mid-October to begin setting things up in the park. Okay. Um, it, and that point in time, we are going to be looking for lots and lots of volunteers in the community to help us with that right. because right. it is going to take Okay. a lot more manpower than what is currently on our steering but committees. But for right now, it's, it's raising that $25,000 so that the displays can be built and other things can be accomplished. Yes, okay. correct. So this isn't the classic put off your Christmas shopping until December 24th. No. You've got to have your Making Spirits Bright shopping done this week. That's correct. Okay, yes. okay. Um, how does a person make their contribution? Do you have any format right now? Is there a website? Are there contact people? Help me understand, you know, I'm sitting in my living room right now and I want to write out a check or something. Who do I send that check to? Where do I get more information? We have established an account um, at Associated Bank. Okay. Our Early Bird Rotary Foundation is providing this account so that all donations are tax deductible. And so if someone would like to send a donation, it would be mailed to Sheboygan Early Bird Foundation okay. in care of Associated Bank mm -hmm. and Rogers okay. at 1217 North Taylor Drive, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, 53081. Okay. Additionally, if they need more information, we do also have a website, okay. which is rotarymakingspiritsbright.org. Okay. Just to, to reiterate, that's rotarymakingspiritsbright.org, where you can get more information. And I believe um, you brought a video, which explains and shows people mm -hmm. what making spirits bright might look like. Um, and I think that is going to follow this discussion that we're having. Um, yes. Is there anything else that somebody, you know, in the discussions that you had with the person from Washington County, how long have they been doing this? Uh, has it been a, a, a snowball effect where other people within the community have gotten so intrigued and so captivated by the 
the program that it has just grown and grown and grown. It's you mentioned Washington County. Right. This will be their fourth year. Okay. And although the Rotary Clubs, the four clubs in Washington County got together and created the event, a lot of individuals in the community are now becoming part of it. But I think the premier one that we are looking at and that we really use for our focus and our expertise is lacrosse. Okay. Because they have been in existence now. They completed their 17th, 17th year. year. Wow. And they have gone from a few hundred thousand pieces of food, which seems like a huge amount, but they are now at about 1.3 million pieces of food that they've been able. And, and when you say pieces of food, this is a can of cans soup? Cans of food. They actually weigh it. They're, they don't count every piece, but okay. they weigh it in order to determine about how many. And it's just grown over the 17 years to be an amazing event and they have a lot more people in the community involved as volunteers than what the Rotarians are at this point. <clears throat> Translate if you can that 1.3 million pieces of food into the number of individuals or families that maybe have been helped in lacrosse. I think lacrosse is a little bit smaller than Sheboygan in terms of overall population. About the same size. About the mm -hmm. same size? Okay, they have a little bit of a different configuration with the university mm -hmm. there, but mm -hmm. how, do you have any, do either of you know how many people have been impacted by the 1.3 million? No, I'm sorry, we don't okay. know. Okay, okay. But um, that, that, that's got to be a huge, huge mm -hmm. benefit, and with the way things have been here in Sheboygan County for mm -hmm. the last few years, I know a number of the food pantries, including one in the church that I go to, it's, it's, it's an, every week or every month whenever the food pantry is open. The, the resources are exhausted mm -hmm. um, just because there is such tremendous need for food disposable items and some of the other things that you mentioned. So yeah. clearly this should be a good program and who knows how the economy is going to play out for the balance of the year or Correct. the future. So Correct. all we can say is that there clearly is a need mm -hmm. And this is a way to help fill that need with either monetary contributions or mm -hmm. contributions of cans of food or whatever. And, and also volunteers as we move forward because we're confident that we're going to hit this goal and we're going to move forward. We will be looking for additional volunteers to help okay. us build the displays. Okay. As Jerry said, to help put the displays up in the park also to volunteer there can be a, let's say a youth group from a church that can come and welcome people into the park that evening collect the food products load them up into the truck that's taken away later along the route there's okay. all different ways they can help they can help uh, okay. you know help people get to see santa claus and things so there's lots of different ways right. that they'll be able to help us throughout the well time. i can think of two avenues to go down there is something <coughs> called the volunteer center yes network here yes. in Sheboygan mm -hmm. County mm -hmm. and I know they're always looking for ways to get other organizations involved through volunteer. Mm -hmm. My wife and her co-worker have been uh, leading the youth group at our church for the last 28 years mm -hmm. and they're always looking for ways to get their their youth involved uh, in different programs and um, the Sunday school teach class that I sure. teach is always looking for opportunities mm -hmm. as well. So, I think one other thing we do want to mention, and you'll hear a little bit on the video, but we sure do want to put a plug in for our, our premier sponsor, the Festival Foods. They have okay. been great f to work with and have been very generous to help us. And clearly we wouldn't have been able to press forward without them. Okay, what have they contributed? They're our premier sponsor at the $10,000 level. Okay. Um, they will also help us out in our concession area with discounted items. Um, Mark Skogan has actually made a statement on the DVD that would be shown after this program. Okay. Um, indicating why he feels this is an important project. Okay. In the, in the uh, few seconds that we have remaining, is there anything else that you would like to say? I just would like to appeal to the public because of the great need of our food pantries. That's the reason why we feel this event is so important. 
and it's affordable to anybody um, to come. We're not charging a $5 fee to get okay. in or a $10 okay. fee to get in. Okay. It is really for the benefit to help all of those people in need in our community, and that need has grown so much in the last five or six years. Okay. So the dollars will be well spent um, to get people into the park to see the light display and to help fill those food pantries. Okay. To the viewers, please stay tuned to the video. Sheboygan County, a great place to live and work. The blessings of our county are numerous, beautiful surroundings, the lakes, the kettles, the parks, and most importantly, a compassionate community that cares deeply about the needs of others. We are fortunate to have individual citizens, organizations, and businesses who care about the future of our local communities. There are over 9,000 individuals that live in Sheboygan County whose income is below the poverty level. These are local families, children, our elderly, individuals that live in our own local neighborhoods. Many of these 9,000 individuals are struggling to find the resources to feed their families every month. Because of local organizations and generous individuals like you, the Sheboygan County Food Bank and local area food pantries are helping families obtain the food they need. Across the county, from Sheboygan to Random Lake, from Plymouth to Sheboygan Falls, the pantries staffed by volunteers and operated by organizations such as Salvation Army and numerous churches are vital to helping feed our families in need. The pantries report serving an average of 2,000 individuals each month. Many of these individuals and families are working full or part-time jobs or are elderly and receiving Social Security. Among the many organizations stepping forward to help are the Rotary Clubs of Sheboygan County. Through their holiday Making Spirits Bright Light Show, the four Rotary Clubs of Sheboygan County hope to collect over 30,000 pounds of food. All the food collected will be distributed to county food pantries. We invite you and your family to experience the wonders of the Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday season by driving through the Making Spirits Bright Light Show located in gorgeous Evergreen Park on the northeast side of Sheboygan. The light extravaganza offers attractive displays and images of holiday season dressed up in lights. So please join us, your neighbors, your friends, in supporting what we hope to make an annual tradition. Rotary Making Spirits Bright gives you an opportunity to support others in need. Please help make this project a reality with your financial support. Join one of our corporate sponsors in supporting this community project. I believe that uh, as the economy has uh, had its bumps in the road uh, over the last few years that we are seeing a need in food pantries unlike uh, any time in my uh, memory really. And as a grocery retailer we feel that uh, we need to play a part in, in helping them stock uh, their needs and do whatever we can to facilitate uh, a growing need that uh, doesn't seem to be backing down very much. Like Mark and their families at Festival Foods, we hope that you will help this project with a donation. The Rotary motto is service above self. We hope to make the Making Spirits Bright project the embodiment of that creed. Please join us in making Sheboygan County a wonderful place to live for all its citizens.